Hey, good afternoon. Rich Tyson here. I have a question to pose today that is something that I think you may have faced as a leader. Have you ever hired someone, brought them on your team, found that they were just right? You vetted them carefully and they came on and did a great job for you for a while. And then suddenly something happens and uh, perhaps you've given them a promotion and, and they don't seem to step up to it as well as what they were doing initially or even the original job that they were doing, they find themselves not doing as well. And, and you're really concerned that uh, maybe they've lapsed into some laziness here. Maybe you misread them in hiring them. Uh, I'd like to propose to you today that maybe something else is going on there. I'd like to illustrate it first with a story, not about an employee, but about uh, a couple with a wonderful uh, young man, their son, Bobby, and uh, what was going on with him that may have some corollary with what might be going on with one of these employees that seems so stellar and then seems to have fallen into what, at least on the surface, looks like laziness. Well, John and Mary is the name of the parents, and they were frustrated with Bobby, their 12-year-old son. Throughout his elementary school years, Bobby had shown great promise. He was an A student, he was athletic, and he was well-liked. However, since the start of seventh grade, he seemed unable to focus on anything. One evening, after having discovered that his room was an absolute disaster, John laid down the law. Bobby, he said, you're, you are not allowed out of this bedroom until you have picked up everything. He slammed the door, leaving Bobby to his task. Two hours later, John and Mary entered Bobby's room. They found their son sitting on his unmade bed with his head in his hands. It was clear that he had done nothing since the time his dad had left him alone. Shocked and angry, John shouted, what is the problem? You have not done one thing I have asked. Fortunately, Mary was more circumspect. Sitting down next to her son, she asked, Bobby, what's wrong? Her son looked up at her, tears in his eyes, and responded, Mom, I want to do what you want, but I just don't know where to start. It wasn't long after this that Bobby's doctor diagnosed him with Attention Deficit D Disorder, ADD. His struggles with school, and even in apparently simple tasks like cleaning his room, were a function of having too many choices. When faced with even choosing between as few as two things, he would freeze, overwhelmed by anxiety. As a business coach, I have observed that Bobby's challenge is one faced by many employees who have been mislabeled as lazy or unmotivated. It may not be attention deficit disorder that afflicts them, although approximately 4.4% of all adults, and that's about 10.5 million, are estimated to have ADD. But often when we really understand the problem, we realize that they are pleading like Bobby. I want to do what you want, I, but I just don't know where to start. This is one of the major root causes of issues facing corporate America today, that issue being the lack of employee engagement. While it is useful to understand that ADD may contribute to this problem, it is important that leaders recognize that it is our responsibility for facilitating the competency and engagement of our people. We must be sure that each employee clearly understands why their job is essential, what it entails, and where to start. Let's look at each of those for a minute why their job is essential. It is critical to set forth the cause of action before giving the course of action, win their hearts before winning their minds. Second, what the job entails. Assure that job competencies are defined. In other words, desired outcomes and the essential actions required to achieve those outcomes. Too often we train by osmosis, that is, we bring someone into a new job and expect them to get up to speed just by hanging around. As leaders, we need to be clear on what it takes to be successful in the key positions within our organizations. And we need to be sure that employees in those positions understand what each job entails. Now, a caution here. At the conclusion of most competency training, a question is asked of the trainee. Do you get it? or do you understand? 
And almost always the answer is yes. And almost always that is inaccurate. You see, most of us don't want to admit that we really don't get it. We don't want to appear inept at learning. So we make the greater error by failing to acknowledge that there are things we don't understand. As leaders, we need to recognize this tendency and make sure we test for competency or at a minimum, expect the trainee to explain in their own words what they have learned. The third item, where to start. Coming full circle to Bobby, he may have understood why he needed to clean his room and even what needed to be done. His hang up was where to begin. Leaders must make sure that their people know where to start. Often employees understand the basic elements of their job, but then are loaded up with additional assignments that create confusion about where to put their attention. Instead of being energized, they freeze. Our job is to recognize this for what it is and what it isn't. It isn't laziness or incompetence. It is overload and we must be prepared to help them know where to start. In conclusion today, might I suggest that when you find someone that seemed to be such a, a great part of your team doing great work and suddenly look like they are lazy or something significant has changed, that rather than go to that labeling of laziness, that we seek to understand why the changes happen. Do they understand, first and foremost, the cause to which they have been invited to participate? Why their role is so essential? Do they know what the essential actions are to create the desired outcomes we want? And do they know where to start? If those questions are asked and answered properly, often we find that this employee that is in question is not lazy, but is someone who wants to do a good job but is struggling. One of my favorite songs is by Otis Redding, Sitting at the Dock of the Bay, where the, the words of the song say, I can't do what 10 people tell me to do, so I guess I'll just stay the same. We need to be careful that as we take a very good employee and load them up with lots of things to do, that we don't make it increasingly difficult for them to display the competency for which we hire them. Hey, thank you for listening today. I hope this is useful to you. Uh, certainly, if you have questions or comments, if you see it differently, I'm very open to that. I hope you will share those comments with me. In addition to that, if you haven't uh, yet subscribed to CEO Builder channel, please do so. And we would love it if you would uh, mention it to your friends. Obviously, we're trying to build a listenership, a viewership, and so it would be great if, if, uh, if you feel comfortable doing that. We'd sure appreciate it. And I hope that you'll uh, be here each day as we continue to share these little vignettes on things that I've found to be important over the years in coaching CEOs. Hey, thank you so much, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow.